kidney stones. I know from personal experience they can be very painful indeed. But now experts at Warwick's Department of Engineering of all places are hoping to develop a new non-invasive and pain-free method of removing them. As Professor Shenkai Lee explains, it's all to do with something called cavitation. Cavitation is a bubble forming in a water or in a liquid. Then it collapses. We call this phenomenon cavitation. Cavitation in past, we, peop we people always hate it because it's damaging things, damaging pumps, turbines, propellers. So as an engineer, we want to predict and prevent cavitation. We hate it very much, but very difficult to get rid of it. Now we found we can make use the great power generated from cavitation bubble collapse for human being, good use. For example, when you develop a good turbines, all these turbines, after a very short period of operation, develop a very strange pattern of damage. Just very recently, we found that cavitation has a great potential to do good things. Because when cavitation bubble collapse generate enormous high pressure, and we can use in this high pressure to damage stones in human body, such as kidney stones and uh, gall stones. And also, we found that actually through my personal research experience, I find if the boundary is very rigid, the bubble will attract to the boundary and generate a high-speed microjet to damage the boundary. If the boundary is very soft, elastic, then the bubble will be pushed away and the jet will push away from the boundary, so the boundary won't be damaged. In human cells, if you develop a cancer, the cancer cell is very, very solid, very, very hard, but the hair cell is very, very soft. By using this knowledge, we can control the cavitation bubble, attack the cancer cell, protect the hair center, not be damaged. From this idea to clinical applications, there are three problems need to be solved. First, we need to speed up the erosion rate, make it acceptable in clinical practice. The second thing is we need to make sure the high phone can focus in through human body, generating cavitation bubble safely, not damage human bodies, human issues. Yeah organs. The third problem is we need to ensure the accuracy because when you treat a patient, the patient moves and also it's a dynamic process. We change the position the stone. So we need to make sure beam at the right place and we try to develop an automatic control system we call it adaptive control system. Automatic control the beam to target the stone not the human hair cell. We hope within our four-year project, we can achieve a clinical trial device. So what do the medical experts make of Professor Lee's research? Well, I've been talking to Michael Wills, a consultant urologist here at the University Hospital in Coventry. I began by asking him how common kidney stones are. The overall incidence of kidney stones in the general population is somewhere between five and 10%. Um, patients are often experience quite severe pain that brings them into hospital for the need for strong painkillers. Also, they can also be troubled with a number of other symptoms such as recurring urinary infections or low back pain, which could be related to the stone within the, moving around within the kidney. How have kidney stones been dealt with historically and what's the disadvantage of the current treatment? In the past, certainly up until about the early 1980s, anybody who needed treatment for a kidney stone would have to undergo an open surgical operation. In the mid-1980s, percutaneous surgery was developed, that is keyhole type surgery. Lithotripsy was then developed in the mid-1980s, which in about 70% of kidney stones avoids the need for surgery. This causes the stone to fragment within the kidney and particles are passed out in the urine. The problem with the current technology is that it's not always that predictable as to whether it will fragment the stone satisfactorily or not. One of the problems is that a significant number of patients do have to return for 
multiple treatments, there's maybe two, three, four treatments. If this new technology can avoid that and deal with the stone in one session, then that's obviously a considerable advantage to the patients. What involvement have you had with this research at Warwick? Well, so far I've been over to the university two or three times for meetings to discuss the uh, future of this project. Um, I think there's a lot of potential in terms of the clinical input that I can offer, and the need for retreatment, the uncertainty of whether a stone will fragment with the current lithotripsy treatment. I think it's, it's still early days in the project, but it certainly has a lot of potential. Uh, first of all, we've got to find out whether we can break model stones and then move on to looking at some tissue experiments at a later date.